Hello everyone. Um, in this tutorial, we'll be going over how to simulate a biplane arc, simple circular arc airfoil. Um, I, it, uh, you can do this just with a small modification of my arc airfoil tutorial case. Um, so, as usual, um, <coughs> th this case folder contains all of the open foam configuration files. Um, this is this is for your convenience to start over after you've run run some run a simulation. This is the GMesh script folder, and uh, <coughs> this is the you can use this right after cloning to get simulation results. So first, let's take a look at the meshing parameters. Uh, you see, we have 15 degrees angle of attack. Um, I think these are ignored for now, but you can put them back in if you want. They're sort of like to allow differential angle of attack between the two airfoils in your biplane. And this is stagger, which means the horizontal displacement, like one forward of the... Uh, you can place one forward of the other. Uh, this is known to be aerodynamically more efficient. Um, if, if your structural, you know... Um, if, if you can build that structurally, uh, that would be favorable. Um, this is the distance, cord normalized distance between the two airfoils. And these are just airfoil uh, parameters, airfoil shape parameters. Um, and this is uh, the grid fineness, basically. The smaller, the finer, and the longer the simulation will run. So let's look at the modifications uh, we made from, so it's entirely in main. All I did was add this other and change the name to Airfoil Loop 2 so we can uh, uh, so we can differentiate them. And then I added this loop to the surface definition. And then I added the additional surfaces that would have been created. Um, I incremented this number by 6. Previously it was 11 to capture all of the biplane airfoil surfaces. So it's extremely simple to modify to get uh, diff this, this case. Um, so um, yeah, you can just press run and get some results. It's automatically going to mesh everything and change the configuration and uh, do all that for you. You can take a look at the run script if you want to know in more detail what exactly is going on. And so I ran this beforehand, and show you, I'll show you the velocity field here. So <clears throat> you can see, sort of see how it develops. Um, this is at 15 degrees angle of attack. There's not much of a separation. Yeah, there's a little bit, um, but uh, looks like a, a reasonable operating uh, flow field. Um, the the lift coefficient here was higher than expected. So typically you'd find that um, <coughs> your uh, lift coefficients would be uh, less than two times the individual airfoil coefficient for a biplane. So for example, uh, if my individual airfoil co lift coefficient was 1.5, I can expect less than two times that for the biplane configuration. Um, <clears throat> so, in this case, the circular airfoil uh, lift coefficient was about 1.5, and but but I found this to have a lift coefficient of 3.3, which was very interesting. Now, I take of course I take this with a grain of salt because I am uh, um, using coarse meshes, uh, but uh, I kind of have a little bit confidence in the in the relative results. Um, so, I mean, this, this might be an interesting direction to explore, like how, um, this is relatively high lift, so how high lift, uh, airfoils perform in biplane configuration, given enough, given enough gap, uh, and, um, yeah, so I just found that really interesting, uh, the lift coefficient was so high, and given the pattern of, of these, uh, open foam simulations, uh, we might expect that it's 
considerably higher than 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 the result we uh, we saw we computed. So I, I actually do plan to make a physical model of a biplane and test it out uh, experimentally. Um, so hopefully I can share those results soon. Um, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Uh, short and simple. Um, if you have any comments or suggestions or requests, please let me know in the comment section. And thank you for watching.